Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Who's glad that we're not the same as we Amen. Amen. Well, I'm just going to give you the scriptures because Sister Martha don't preach the message. Amen. Amen. And so I know that this message is for somebody in here. Yes. Or when he gave it to me, I could feel it. And man, she done preached a message wow. on a lot to the way he gave it. I know that's God. He's got it for somebody yes. in here. Yes. So uh, just listen <coughs> up and move the way God. If God's dealing with you, move yes. on. Because yes. like I said, it's for somebody. He's already confirmed the path. Well, I'm going to start it off in Jeremiah 29th chapter 11th verse. It's one we've heard spoken here many times. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Yes, yes, Lord. Now John 6, 66 and 67. For that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Now before I go into my other scriptures, which I had planned to do, God told me to go ahead and do it this way. Who is it that feels like sometimes we're climbing up the rough side of the mountains? There's no footholds, no hand grips, no way of pulling yourself up. Seems like that you're just barely hanging on. But you're starting to slip because you're just barely hanging on by your fingertips. Yes. But hold on. Yes. Just hold on a little longer. Amen. Reach for God's unchanging hand. Yes. The same hand that has us in His grips. Right. Yes. The same hand that parted the Red Sea so the people could go through it. The same hand that's given us our strength and our deliverance. The same hand that makes the way when there seems to be no way. Just hold on to God's unchanging hand. The same hand that is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forevermore. The same mighty hand that has protection over us. Hold on to his hand. Yes. We are all here on this earth for a purpose and a plan for we have an expected end. Right. We're not just by here by coincidence. Right. We're not a product of a romantic encounter between our parents. Yes. We're here because God spoke us into existence. Yes. God speaks in the language of purpose for solutions. Yes, that's good. Yeah. He has a plan. Yes. He has a purpose for each and every individual. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We're not Amen. here just by coincidence. That's right. He spoke us here by authority. Yes. yes. Thank you. Because we're in his grips. Amen. But just because we're in his grips. Because he has a purpose and he has a plan for us, we also have an enemy. That's right. Satan hates us. Oh, yes. He is the machine gun. He has put a target on us. He uses us for target practice. When we start believing in Jesus, even before we become a Christian, and he sees what we, the capabilities God has for us, he automatically puts the bulls out on our backs. God is telling you today, we always, we've been speaking of God's report and believing in His report. But the report for somebody today is, God's not done with you yet. He's not finished working through you yet. Our hands are not behind us. Our hands are ahead. Hold on, God's unchanging hand. Now, Acts 28, I'm going to read verses 1 through 3 and 5. 
And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Malta. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. Now verse 5. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Now, Mota was a, it was an island off the, when they were shipwrecked, that uh, they went to for refuge. Paul, it wasn't his destination. He was going to Rome. But he had to take a detour into Malta. We ever felt like we're going through Malta, a place of not of our destination, a place we're going to that we never planned on even visiting, a place where we're stuck at. Sometimes we go through our motives. But the purpose is we don't need to look at the, so much at the present rain. The reign of our problems, the reign of our circumstances. But we need to look at the latter reign. God's blessings and God's miracles upon us as we're going through Moab. Now, a lot of times we look at Moab and wonder why did God send us here? A lot of times we look at our Moab and wonder, is this from God? Or is this from Satan? It don't matter who it's from. It still comes filtered through the same hand because God only lets Satan put on us right. what he allows Satan to put on us. So God's got us going through the moment where they came from Satan or God. He's got us going through the moment for a purpose and for a plan. A lot of times we might we think, okay, what did I do wrong? Why is all this trouble and tribulation on me? It might not even be us, as was Paul here, who was falsely accused. He had become a prisoner. Now he's shipwrecked. Now he's on a, an island they had no intention of even going to. Seems like he's going through a storm that never ends, and now he's gotten snake bit. God is where just where is your head? Sometimes we go through our motor to help somebody else because yes. if we'd have read further yes. right. into the story, we see where he starts killing people. Yes. Yes. Sometimes we may be going through our motive to help somebody else out. Right. Sometimes Amen. we're going through our motive so we can get to our destination. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Now I'm going to talk on the barbarous people. Here, this author, I think, used the barbarous people but just more or less referring as natives of the land. But also, a barbarous people, I want to look give a little twist on it, uh, the way the story's written here. But a lot of times we look at barbarous people as being ruthless, unkind, which we see these was very kind, that is above kindness. But to look at the way we usually look at barbarous people, God would change people's character in our favor. Yes. Yes. But as these barbarous people here, they, they showed no little kindness. They kindled the fire, received us every one. That's the way the church needs to be. That's what we need to be as Christians. And these barbarous people, I think, had a, a, a different language. That's the way the church needs to be. They need to have a different language than the world. The world speaks of hatred, of judgment. The church needs to be loving to everyone, open its arms up to everyone, and 
show the love of Jesus Christ. No matter what walk of life they come to. We need to show love of Jesus and welcome everybody with open arms. We need to keep the fires kindled. Yes, thank you, Lord. The Word of God and the prayers to help the code people to get them to burn in pot. For it's when the heat of God's Word drives out the non experience. Yes. Heat of God's Word purifies us. Yes. When Satan is on attack, and he's trying to latch himself to us. We need to shake him off into the fire by the word of God. Yes. Rebuke him in Jesus' name. Right. Shake him off before he gets into our bloodline yes. and starts <coughs> forming and killing our spirit. Right. If you're going through your remote, God is taking you right now. The solution is to ground the fire. Short message. That's what God gave me. That's what I brought. Dragon sometimes. Yes, 
It says that the dragon will cause the beast of the land and the beast of the sea to team up against those of God. Yes. yes. We know we have to be ready to fight a dragon, not just a little lizard. Yeah. Right. Amen. Woo! That's, that's right. right. That's exactly that's exactly, I forgot, that's exactly the way that I heard it. And this is not just a little lizard. This morning, that's exactly what the Lord said. He said, it's not just a little lizard, and that's the reason I'm taking care of it. 